Greetings. Uh, this video will uh, support the apparent uh, International Criminal Court plans to proceed with arrest warrants against uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and possibly others in his government. Um, and it will, uh, I will in this video rebut uh, comments made by uh, United States Speaker of the House Mike Johnson uh, with empty threats against, uh, let, let me do the rebuttal. Uh, first of all, it, it's very simple, right? Uh, door number one is if we open that door, if, it, if we face nuclear annihilation, right? It's not a hard choice. Uh, door number two, uh, we face uh, Mike Johnson's threats, uh, and none of us choose uh, door number one, right? Now, so why do I say to the public, and you know, this will be the umpteenth time, and I'm, I'm attaching a whole bunch of videos in support of this to connect the dots, um, and why do I say to the International Criminal Court, uh, uh, you know, which I've proffered to the Federal Bureau of Investigation here. You, you can't lie to the federal investigation. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm offering an opinion. I could be wrong about it. I don't think I am. You, you be the judge. Here it comes. Why am I saying that uh, all of us, including, for instance, the protesting students who are smart enough to be protesting, uh, nobody wants door number one, nuclear war. Why do I think that Benjamin Netanyahu is getting ready to hit the, uh, if, 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 we, if we cannot persuade the International Criminal Court to uh, issue arrest warrants, I'm, I'm afraid we're all doomed. And I've been saying this now for months. So how do I get there? Um, the... The, really, the, the most concise presentation is to think back to the emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council uh, uh, Sunday two weeks ago, uh, so 14 days ago on a Sunday. Uh, Israel had attacked Iran by bombing its consulate in Damascus, Syria sorry, in Damascus, Syria, which is, no pun intended, a serious violation of international law, right? Um, so Iran responded by giving everyone a heads up and saying, including the United States, right? Uh, and attacking U.S. military, sorry, not U.S., uh, I apologize, Israel military installations, uh, the opposite of terrorism, right? Because a terrorist does what Israel is doing. They're killing the people. They're killing children, right? Various figures, 15,000, 17,000, uh, and so on. Genocide, but uh, killing all the people. They're doing the opposite of terrorism. They're not going after Hamas. Instead, they're trying to uh, destroy the entire Arab population of Gaza. Anyways, um, so the, the Security Council, th this brings, this solves... This gets us, unfortunately, unfortunately, to World War III because um, at that uh, emergency United Nations Security Council meeting, uh, Russia said to Biden, that is Russia's representative at the United Nations, said to Biden's representative at the United Nations, they, they basically threatened each other with World War III. Russia said to Biden, if you bomb Iran, Russia will feel it is necessary to enter this war in defense of Iran. There's like a, a, a three tripartite alliance between China, Russia, and Iran. And Russia knows uh, that uh, if Iran falls, Russia, China are next. And so they said, don't bomb Iran. That's crossing the red line. We will have to enter the war. And that's a, a diplomatic speech for World War III. And then in the same um, meeting, 
emergency meeting, uh, Biden said to Russia, we're crossing your red line. And they warned Iran that if, if Iran counterattacks against Israel again, uh, Biden will bomb Iran. So they're, they're like crossing swords on World War III. And the thing is, shortly thereafter, Israel again attacked, bombed Iran. Do you follow me? So they're provoking World War III. And there's no purpose to it, right? Israel is committing genocide with Biden's support. Um, and there's no reason for it. They're, they're making up reasons that have absolutely no uh, relationship to reality. Um, uh, one example is, you, you know, so Hamas uh, attacked Israel. Let's call that a war crime. I, I consider it a war crime. Um, but then now there have been five or six war crimes committed by Israel and, and Biden uh, that, that dwarf uh, the Hamas killing of 1,100 innocent Israelis uh, into nothing, right? Because a genocide of 2.3 million people uh, obviously dwarfs the killing of 1,100 people into relative nothingness. And um, so going back then to, and I'm, I'm sending this to the International Criminal Court, uh, let's, let's, what's the second leg of my argument? Why do I submit to the public and to our sacred International Criminal Court? We're, we're facing nuclear annihilation by Netanyahu, who is already, so how do I get there? Unfortunately, we have the nuclear weapons proliferation nightmare of at least nine countries possessing nuclear weapons and the capability of starting a nuclear war. Uh, just for the record, of course, everyone, the International Criminal Court knows better than any of us, uh, those nine countries are uh, the members of the United Nations Security Council, uh, the United States, England, France, Russia, China, the permanent members. Uh, in addition to that, we know that India now has nuclear weapons for some time, and Pakistan likewise, um, probably in the past 20 years. And then uh, in addition to them, you have North Korea, uh, and now we're getting into the due problem countries. North Korea, the guy's a kook, he's a madman. He's murdered member of his own, members of his own family. There's no predicting what Kim Jong-un will do. For me, the, you, you lose the ability to try to psychoanalyze him when you realize he's murdered people in his own family. He has no regard, right, for who he kills, right? Uh, and then... Why Netanyahu is, I think, the one who will start World War Three, or rather nuclear war, if we don't stop him. Uh, I, um, because he's already been found, he's been convicted prior, long before, years ago, uh, of corruption uh, charges in Israel. Uh, so he's slated to go to jail soon. He tried to challenge it uh, by overthrowing the court system in Israel uh, to, to uh, be able to wipe out his, his uh, corruption convictions. But the Israel Supreme Court said, no, you can't do that. So he's, this, the, the longer that uh, Netanyahu extends this war, the longer he stays out of prison, the deeper he takes us into this war. And let's say by bombing Iran and so on, uh, the, the longer he stays out of prison. But, and I think he's already said, you know, that, so, so the point is he's uh, totally unstable. Every, everybody in the world now knows that he's committing Jewish genocide. Um, uh, and nobody likes it, except Biden, except Speaker Mike Johnson. All right, so, um, so he's the, so, 
and, and, and if, if, if he thinks he's going to go to jail, that is, I'm talking now about Benjamin Netanyahu, whether it be through his prior convictions because the war is finally ending or because of his new perspective, uh, is, is committing the crime of genocide, of killing some 15,000 or more innocent children, uh, some 35,000 or more Gazans for the crime of just being an Arab, um, then, uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. So, um, he's not going to stop. And, and, uh, I think personally that if the international criminal court does issue arrest warrants as it's pondering doing, that actually will give us a chance to stop. Uh, I think it'll turn the probability of a nuclear war from, in my opinion, virtual certainty to less than probable. And um, uh, I like to be honest with people, even if it's not uh, the best way to convince the ICC, but I, I think other countries and will need to mobilize to, to make the arrest. We need to re get separate Benjamin Netanyahu and the nuclear bomb button, right? We need to in, we need to confine him so he can't do this because he's a total freak out, a total madman. And um, so again, I mean, rather than go on, I'm seeing now I'm almost past 10, 12 minutes, I'll conclude with this, but remember I have all kinds of videos and evidence uh, attached to this YouTube. Uh, um, but I'll summarize, I've studied these matters for over 25,000 hours since the 9-11-2001 attack on our country. Um, I've been published in Veterans Today uh, online magazine, Veterans Today, even on Veterans Day, if you can believe that, um, uh, six times. Um, and um, so anyways, uh, if the, if to you, the International Criminal Court, if, if you don't have, if you don't issue the arrest warrants, I think that the probability that we'll see a nuclear war uh, within weeks and months, or like actually my estimate is six weeks to two months. Uh, no, six, no, let me take this, yeah, six weeks to three months, par pardon me, I'm sorry for not remembering the exact calculations that I've done, six weeks to three months. If you, d so what do you have to lose, you know? Uh, and as far as Mike Johnson, it's just empty threats. He's not, he, he says he's gonna do this or do that, uh, but he doesn't make any exact threats. Um, but again, is it door number one or door number two, right? Uh, no one wants to open door number one, which is nuclear annihilation. So we go forward and, and you know, say, um, let's do what we can to stop losing the entire Northern hemisphere to nuclear war. <laughs> Thank you for listening.